Hello everyone and welcome back to Nifty 50 Photographers. In today's video I'm going to talk about how to make your photos really sharp. Now I commonly get asked by beginners why are my photos out of focus or blurry and it's very upsetting but it happens even to the best of us experienced photographers. And I'm going to go through seven things you can do to ensure you eliminate all the things that will stop your photos being sharp. Now don't beat yourself up too much it might not even be your fault that they're not super sharp. Well, let's start with number one, and that's understanding the light triangle. So that's understanding shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, and how they all affect the photo you're trying to take. Let me start perhaps with the simplest one, which is ISO. Now, ISO you should try and set as low as possible. You don't need to go below 100, but the lower you can get it, the better. Once you get up to very high ISOs, and this will happen in situations where it's dark, for example, if you're taking photographs inside and there's not much lighting, then there is a danger that the image might become grainy because there's a lot of noise coming from the sensor. The sensor doesn't work as well at those very high speeds. Now, camera sensors have come on tremendously and they work pretty well in low light now. So hopefully it's an issue you won't come across much and certainly you should be able to get away with ISO speeds up into the one, two, three, even 4000s if you've got a really good new camera. Now let's move on to shutter speed. Now shutter speed is the thing that's going to determine freezing action if you've got something moving. There's another aspect to this. You're not going to be able to hold your camera 100% steady. When you press the shutter, you're going to get a little bit of shake. So the secret is to get a shutter speed fast enough to freeze that movement. If you want a very rough shutter speed to work from, choose a 60th of a second, but it will vary according to the focal length of your lens. So if you're using big telephoto lenses, you've got two problems. One is they're heavier, the other is they're compressing the scene. So something from a long way away is coming very close. Now, those of us who've played around with laser measures or laser pointers will know when you're trying to shine a dot of light at something that's a long, long way away, the tiniest little movement in your hand produces a massive swing on that little dot on the wall or whatever you're shining it on. That's exactly the same issue you've got with telephoto lenses. How you get round that is to set a shutter speed that's at least the reciprocal of the focal length of the lens. What do I mean by that? It's basically reciprocal is one over so if you've got a 200 millimeter lens you need a 200th of a second for your shutter speed 50 mil lens a 50th of a second and so on so for my third point is if you have to shoot in low light or there's not enough light to get a shutter speed fast enough for your focal length of your lens you're going to need to steady your camera so the best way to do that of course is with a tripod now if you are using a tripod you might want to switch your optical stabilization off because sometimes the camera is fooled by being on a tripod and it tries to compensate for camera shake that isn't there and that can add some blurriness to your image. Having said that, if you haven't got a tripod, just look for something you can steady the camera on. You know, is there a wall? Is there a camera bag you could use? Anything to help stabilize it so you take away any chance of camera shake. The other thing to remember if you're going to use a tripod or steady your camera somehow is set the self timer or use a remote control so that you don't introduce camera shake simply by pressing the shutter. If you're not familiar with how to get the best out of your tripod then check out my video again up here somewhere that gives you tips on how to get the most out of a tripod. Well let's talk now about aperture and depth of focus because the two are closely related. You may remember and if you don't check out my video on aperture and shutter speed that a narrow aperture gives a very wide depth of focus. Conversely, a wide aperture, that's a low F number, gives a shallow depth of focus. Now that might be one reason why your images are out of focus. You've chosen the wrong aperture. The other thing is, if you choose a very narrow aperture and you've got lots of your scene in focus, you tend to make the image look a bit better. But if you choose something wider, the bits that are in focus might appear sharper than those with a narrow aperture when you compare the two images. Now the other thing you need to think about is your lens will have a sweet spot at which it performs the best. 
how do you find the sweet spot i hear you ask well you can take a series of test shots at different apertures if you do that make sure you've got some fine detail in there ideally some text or something like that so you can zoom in look at it on your computer look at it blown up and see which aperture gives you the sharpest images if you can't be bothered to do all that it's well worth just googling the make and model of your lens and uh, just uh, type in something like what is the sweet spot of this type of lens somebody maybe have done all the hard work for you now one thing is for sure it won't be at the extreme apertures so it won't be at the very narrowest and it won't be at the very widest it's normally a few stops in from the widest so it's likely to be something like f5.6 6.3 somewhere around there so once you've established that that is the best way to get the best out of your lens now the other important point to consider is the focus mode you've got set on your camera now, most cameras have a number of different options it might be things like continuous it might be single it might have a people following mode it might have some sort of 3d tracking mode as well and you need to choose the one that matches the type of subject that you're photographing so stationary subjects you need to photograph with a single focus method and moving subjects you need to photograph with a continuous one or one of the tracking options now if you don't understand focus modes guess what you need to watch a video which i'm going to link to up here somewhere so make sure you get that set and that will help you get your photos in focus now if you really want to go the whole hog on that you can use a thing called back button focus and I've got a video on that too somewhere up here now that means you take more control so instead of the camera doing a focusing system and applying that when you press the shutter you actually force it to do it when you press one of the buttons on the camera and that way you can ensure the subject you want is the one it has focused on it hasn't picked something else up in the foreground that you didn't notice and that's caused your real subject to be out of focus and something else that you're not interested in to be in focus now another thing you can do to help yourself is take some test shots and just check and see if everything is sharp and in focus particularly helpful when you're trying to do moving subjects perhaps if you're photographing some sports action or something like that maybe you're a racetrack photographing motorbikes or cars or something and you know that there's a point that they're going to pass which is where you want to take your photo you can pre-focus on that so that you know anything that passes that point should be in focus and that's a good way to get set up but taking test shots is one way ensuring you've got all the settings correct and you haven't just made a simple error and got something set the wrong way now the final thing you can do which i alluded to at the start of this video is actually if you still find that everything isn't really as super sharp as you like might actually be your camera or your lens that's not great one of the first things you could try is a prime lens and an ideal one to try is a nifty 50. i've got a video which i'll link to up here which shows how i use a 50 mil lens for landscape photography surprising what you can do with that fixed focal length now fixed focal length lenses are always generally sharper than telephoto ones because everything is optimized for that focal length so you will stand a better chance of getting those really sharp photos but don't beat yourself up when you see something online that looks super sharp everything in massive focus might be the photographer spent a fortune on a very expensive prime lens and a very expensive camera and sometimes there's no getting away from it that that gear will help you take something that's super sharp but master all these techniques first before you go out and spend a ton of money on new gear much as we all love to do that so if you follow those tips I guarantee you'll stand a much better chance of getting sharper photos i hope you uh, find them successful for you i look forward to seeing you in the next video